Well, good day, everyone. I hope everything is going well with you. And I welcome you back to our subject, Purposive Communication Using English in Multilingual Context. I hope that you are in a comfortable seat wherever you are watching this pre-recorded video. Okay, so let's start with our last discussion in Unit 3, Intercultural Communication. And our last discussion or last lesson is all about the Lesson 5, Coping with the Challenges of Intercultural Communication. So to start with, let's have first our learning outcomes. First is to recognize the challenges of intercultural communication, determine the sources of misunderstanding. Third is to identify the approaches to studying intercultural communication. Fourth, appreciate learning about other cultures and identities. And our last learning outcome is to appreciate the value of coexisting with individuals of different cultural background. So let's start with this. Challenges of intercultural communication. According to Scolion and Scolion 1995 stated that when we are communicating with people who are very different from us, it is very difficult to know how to draw inferences about what they mean. And so it is impossible to depend on shared knowledge and background for confidence in our interpretations. So if we say inference here or inferences, it is uh, reaching or uh, kind of reaching conclusion about them. And di ba, tinuod dyan ang giingon ni Skolian and Skolian 1995 because there are times nga makahistorya ta o foreigner then maglingo-lingo na lang ta kaya wa ta kasabot o sa diyang pasabot and that's reality. And it is always challenging to uh, to deal with people from different cultures. The challenges uh, the challenges lies in the ways of understanding not only the verbal code but also the non-verbal code. Di ba, pamingo sila ha? Ang, uh, tara, ang ila din tumong di ay nga asa ang SM niya may ka mga na ang Amerikano nga tudlo na o di ba very helpful ang non-verbal kay kay ma-identify na to kung ang sadyari iyang pangutana unless kung di na juga kasabot siya ang historia ha next the lack of shared knowledge and beliefs and cultural diversity make it more complicated to arrive at the correct inference or interpretation of meanings but it can also be argued that English is now a global lingua franca. In fact, with the ASEAN integration, English has been declared the official or working language of ASEAN. If you say ASEAN, mona siya ang Association of Southeast Asian Nation. And that is ASEAN. And lastly, it is thus important to emphasize that the ownership of English cannot be attributed to just one country or to those who, who use it as a native or home language. Because namin tayo ginatawag na cultural, cultural diversity nga lahi tao mga culture. Okay? Next. Take note that the misunderstanding in intercultural communication may not always be caused by uh, verbal utterances. Misunderstanding may also occur due to wrong interpretations of the nonverbal code. For, for instance, the handshake. So let's take a look at, the, at this example on how handshakes differ from country to country. So we have here the country origin and the type of handshake. In United States, it, it's just a firm handshake. In France, a soft handshake. In Germany, firm handshake for men accompanied by a slight bow. Mm. Japan, handshake with arm firmly extended accompanied by a bow. Mm -hmm. And in Middle East, handshake and free hand place on the forearm of the other person. And that is, from, uh, that is the type of handshake from Middle East. Pero kung sa Philippines na, malalahe, mantag-style. 
<laughs> di ba lahat tag style sa to ang type of handshake. So, di ba? Mag-differ din na siya country by country. Country to country. And in terms of greetings. So, greetings, it is a ritual also vary from culture to culture. Japanese women bow differently from Japanese men. O, di ba? Japanese men ang ilahang kamot na sa kilid. Japanese women, ang ilang kamot na silahang lap. And ang German bow, oh, di ba? straight body, ulo lang ang giliho. Oh, di ba? <laughs> sa ato agani nga, kulang na lang muluhod <laughs> para mo greetings. And mo na siya. Di ba? We can see that German bow is termed as a... Uh, and also, German bow is termed as a... Uh, Uh, denier means bow to an in recognition of an authority. Thus, when a person bows, he or she is actually sending the message at your service. Uh, di ba? Mana siya ang pasabot. Next. So the following are the sources of misunderstanding. So misunderstanding between people of different cultures can be caused by the following sources. Like, for example, the ambiguity. It is the lack of explicitness on the part of the speakers in the form of problematic reference, problematic reference and ambiguous semantics in which an utterance is open to different interpretations. So if we say ambiguity, muna siya ang kalabuan of exactness, of meaning in language. Next, we have the performance-related misunderstanding. It slip, slips the tongue and mishearing, which may be due to utterances spoken quickly and, and, and clearly. So, mana siya ang mabulul-bulul ka or stuttering. Mana siya. Next source of misunderstanding is the language-related Uh, misunderstanding and grammatically of the sentences what should follow sa structure gaps uh, gaps in world knowledge gaps in content rather than language gaps in world knowledge kanang you don't have enough knowledge of those words of this body language sa kanang a different culture next is the local context turns and turns within sequence within sequences Produced by the participants themselves and the orientation of the participants as well as the repair moves that follow the displayed misunderstanding. And here, the last topic for this lesson, approaches to studying intercultural communication. And to better understand the concept of intercultural communication, Uh, there are three approaches as explained by Martin and Nakaraya, Nakayama. Again, Martin and Nakayama 2010. So, mauni ang toloka approaches. <coughs> Sorry. The social science or functionalist, interpretative and critical. So, ibasahon lang ninyo na siya ha, ang discipline on which approach is founded in terms of social science or functional system. Uh, mana siya ang psychology na siya and in terms of interpretive anthropology or social linguistics and in terms of critical it's various okay mana siya and the rest the rest the rest the rest basta lang na siya ang three approaches to intercultural communication therefore um, intercultural communication can be studied through uh, functionalist Uh, functionalist mo na siya, uh, functionalist or social science mo na siya ang, uh, it sees uh, society as a complex system whose parts work together to promote solidarity and stability. And if we say interpretative in terms of intercultural communication, it encompasses a social theories and perspectives that embrace a view of reality as socially constructed or made meaningful through actors' understanding of events. And lastly, is the critical approach to intercultural communication. Uh, it is used to, uh, no, critical. It is used to analyze, question, interpret, 
can synthesize and evaluate literary works with a specific mindset. And that's the end of our discussion in Unit 3, Lesson 5 discussion. If may mga kalibog, panihig ko pakirli watch aning uh, pre-recorded video and di, kung di jud kaya masabdan, kindly comment your uh, queries or clarification or even confusion on the chat box, uh, on the chat box, on the comment box where I posted this pre-recorded video. Again, thank you so much, everyone. See you next time and keep safe and God bless us all. Bye-bye.